What's up in the loop? It's Hi checking in from Huntsville, Alabama, the U.S. Space and Rocket Center, the official home of Space Camp, an official NASA Visitor Center, Smithsonian affiliate, a giant rocket there. So I've uh, been to Kennedy Space Center, been to the one in Houston, but has not have not been to this one in Huntsville. So we're going to go in and check it out. Got quite a bit of uh, stuff to see. Not coming here for Space Camp, but just coming here for the Visitor Center. So let's head inside. The museum starts with a throwback room of vintage space clips on TV and memorabilia from some of the earliest days in NASA. It was kind of a cool way to ground ourselves and start our tour of the museum. Snoopy was actually an early mascot for the program. Complex is essentially two big buildings. One at the entrance and visitor center, which you're seeing here. There's a lot of models. The one with the Saturn rockets and a big outdoor area in between. Here's kind of an overview of the complex with the visitor center being in the center of the map. Let's head outside. The outdoor area was, was interesting. It featured a, a mix of mock-ups of the real thing, like this is a, a mock-up here, to various military artifacts, to various rockets. It, it was just interesting because some of the stuff was real and some of the stuff like this was, was fake to kind of show off what it would have kind of been like to land on the moon. Some of the military stuff was related to the space program. Some of the stuff wasn't. Some of the stuff was rockets, which makes sense because, again, this is the rocket center, not just the space center, space and rocket center. So there was a lot of various rockets. Here is one of the earlier space stations. But again, it was a mock-up of the real thing, not the actual vehicle or Skylab that went to space. So this complex seemed to have a lot of mock-ups. We'll get to uh, in, in a second here that, that did show the real thing. There were some very interesting pieces like this little yellow submarine. Very tiny and claustrophobic to get in and ride around in that in the water for sure. Again, lots of rockets, some military equipment that felt a little out of place. But again, this this was the rocket center and a nice area to walk around. And they did have information on all the various rockets and what they were and their uses. Again, military equipment it technically does have rockets on it, so it technically fits. They did have two amusement park style rides. Uh, one was the SNS style space shot and drop tower. Uh, these were included with emissions. Later on in the video, we'll show you some stuff that wasn't included. But uh, this, this is a great ride. Uh, you know, one of my favorites at a theme park. And then they had a Gravitron uh, you see at your classic state fair or county fair that simulated G forces. And yeah, they don't normally have Star Wars people walking around, but we visited on May the 4th, so I, I think. May the 4th in space, it, it kind of made sense that they probably visited on that day, but they normally don't have Star Wars people walking around. But it's kind of fun to show in the video. Now kind of the highlight of our tour of the complex was the Saturn area, the Saturn V. And now this is just one of the biggest rockets from the space program, and it's really hard to put in perspective just how ginormous this thing is. I, you can see it goes on forever. It's really, really big. And all around it, they had various artifacts and museum kind of pieces from across the space uh, program's timeline. It, and these were really neat from various engine parts to capsules to kind of show you how the astronauts sat in on top of that giant rocket to the head of NASA's office or the head of rockets at the time. And yes, this is a replica and he really did in real life remove the ceiling tile to fit that model in there. That's, that's kind of a cool move. Hey, it doesn't fit. I'm going to remove the ceiling tile. Like I said, a lot of different stuff from the various programs of NASA. And here's one of the, the engines. Great mix of stuff in this room. This was our favorite part of the complex because it had engine stuff to all the way up through the Apollo stuff with the moon landing. Again, some, a lot of stuff that was replica. But then you also had some stuff that was real, like a piece of the moon itself. That's pretty, pretty cool seeing the moon. Uh, like, like I said, this area was really interesting because it kind of took you through all aspects of the program. And this was a newer building, newer compared to the rest of the complex. So it felt a little bit more new, felt a little bit more modern. This was a really interesting vehicle that 
used to transport the astronauts from the holding area to the shuttle. And it disappeared for a long time. And they actually found it on some farm uh, in the south. Um, it's just kind of sitting there. So they brought it back to the complex and restored it. And it's kind of cool to go in and see, again, this is the real thing. So not a mock-up. Kind of see this is where the astronauts kind of lived in, in isolation. Um, you know, so that they were cleansed and all that before getting on the rocket. Now, unlike some of the other complexes or space museums, they don't have a space shuttle, which is a little bit of a bummer, but obviously only so many go around. This is the Pathfinder, which was one of the original mock-ups for the shuttle program, but even that was under construction at the time. So you, if you're a big space shuttle person, not the, not the place to go. Back in the visitor center building, they did have a mock-up of the space station. This was kind of cool. Felt very kind of like Star Wars or Star Trek-esque to, to walk around and see what it would be like to walk through like a, a space station kind of complex. Again, very Star Wars vibes here. And then you could participate in some upcharge activities where you basically rock climbed over top of this and acted out what it would be like to fix or repair something on one of these space station type complexes. They, NASA does have a center nearby that's off limits to visitors where they do monitor some rockets. So NASA does have presence in the area and this is kind of a mock-up of what that facility nearby does and how they monitor a lot of the rockets and, and various items that are in orbit throughout space. So that's kind of neat to see some live feeds. Complex does have some upcharge attractions. There's, a, there's some VR simulators as well as a more traditional simulator kind of simulating various aspects of space and launches and how it, how it feels we didn't do any of that but also they had some stuff about local other alabama area uh, companies um not just nasa's in the area not just u.s government's working on stuff but also ua ula and various other companies are building rocket and space parts in the area which was cool to see they had a gift shop of course, including this fantastic dog style shirt. Awesome, awesome merch. The area is also home to Space Camp. Now, they have Space Camp at the other NASA complexes, but this is kind of the main one. And we did find out, if you're, in case you're wondering, they do offer Space Camp for adults. So some, something to keep in mind if you're really into space. Overall, we spent about two hours at the complex. If we hadn't already visited Kennedy Space Center and the Houston complex, we probably would have liked this one a little bit more. It was the most dated out of all three. It was still nice to go, but it just needs a few more modern things. Also want to shout out the Bridge Street Town Center, which is about a mile or two miles away. Nice shopping and dining district with some hotels. It's where we stayed and made for a nice evening to grab dinner and leisurely walk around this, this complex. It had very disney springs or city walk if you're used to disney world or universal kind of vibes with the hotels and restaurants nearby thanks for watching